Today on The Breakfast, no fewer than 109 persons burned to death after fire got at an illegal oil refinery site at Abacheke will fire in Igbema community or Haji Igbema local government area of Imo state. What's the way forward for illegal bunkering in Nigeria? Also on The Breakfast, former presidential aide Reno Mercury reveals why the People's Democratic Party might lose its chance of regaining power in the 2023 general elections. How do they wiggle out of this? And we will review the biggest stories making headlines across national dailies. Good morning to you. Many thanks for joining us. You're watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadone. And I am Messi Boko. Beautiful morning to you. It's good to have you join us. Yes, it is indeed a pleasure as we slide on straight to top trending. Uh, what's uh, making the headlines, uh, what made the headlines over the weekend and uh, what are Nigerians and of course, uh, in uh, Nigeria and of course outside Nigeria, you know, talking about uh, the Alafi of Oyo uh, passed away over the weekend and uh, he uh, was um, the king for about 31 years and it, it um, it got Nigerians talking. Let me just give you a bit of uh, some things that most people don't know about the Alafi of Oyo. Uh, the Alafi of Oyo, or Balamidi Adeyemi the Fed, uh, joined his ancestors on Friday night, uh, bringing an end to his 52 year illustrious uh, reign on the throne. Aged 83, Oba Adeyemi, who died at the Afeb Abalola University Teaching Hospital at AKT, was the longest serving Alafi of Oyo. Okay, uh, he was born in 1938, uh, October 15 to be precise, into the Aluo Lodun Royal House and was a member of the House of Oromio. Ikuba Bayeye, whose mother, Ibiron Ked, died when he was young, was the son of late Raji Adeniron Adeyemi, who became a Lafi in 1945. He actually became um, the king at the age of 31, and he has joined his assessors. That's it. So um, at first, uh, when that story actually broke, th there was a lot of back and forth whether or not, you know, the Alafin of Oyo joined his ancestors. But we need to understand that, you know, the Alafin of Oyo, it's a very um, powerful title uh, in the Yoruba kingdom. It's very, very powerful. If you look at the 17th and the 18th century, you also find that, that prior to this time, um, th there was a lot of political dominance. And so moving away from that, the Alafin of Oyo, if you want to look at uh, that particular title, is seen as a political head of the empire. He was chosen by the Oyomisi, who is uh, supposed to you know, nominate the Alafin of Oyo. And it was claimed that he could only appear three times mm. in public. So I really don't know how many times um, the, the former um, Alafin actually appeared, however. But that was actually in the pre-colonial time. So because yeah. you have the fact that the uh, Oyo Empire existed at the time, you know, pre-colonial era, uh, the colonial era, and the medieval, you want to say medieval era, or the present day, however you want to put it. But um, it's very, very powerful. It's a, a very prominent title at the time. Yes, they were very involved in protecting the the traditional Yoruba, uh, Yoruba cost, um, you know, culture and protecting it, however. And at that time also, you know, a lot of commercial activities was going on as the forest was also a link. You, you had all of that. Um, he also served as the judicial head at the time. So if you look at governments now, you know, he served as a judicial head. He also appointed a lot of persons. You could all remember uh, the uh, Basho, if I'm not mistaken, if that's how it's been called. I mean, if you look at Bashur. all of the appointments, yes, the Bashur. And uh, all the titles, he was responsible for appointing this or that person. So it just brings us back to the fact that uh, we as Africans, we have you know, our culture prior to this time. right? We had a way of governance. We had a way where we governed our affairs before we had um, the intrusion, if you want to say, <laughs> of the British in the system. But very interesting, 
a lot of things about him was the fact that uh, he's very schooled, very, very schooled. Um, he was also involved in boxing, if you also remember his story. Mm -hmm. And the, the fact that the father was very, very deliberate in ensuring that he understands the culture, including religion as well, because at the time where he was supposed to leave with the father in Lagos, uh, the father made sure that he had to go back and learn you know, the traditions uh, and, uh, of the culture. Of course, preparing him you know, for the future. Yes, uh, he was actually a very long-standing ruler. He wrote for about 51 or 52 years. He was just about eight, uh, 31 when he became, uh, you know, the Alafian of Oyo. And uh, he was the permanent ch chairman of the council, you know, of uh, Obas and chiefs in Oyo state until May the 3rd, uh, 2011, when former governor Adebay Alao Akala uh, now late announced that the state government had passed a law that introduced rotation of the office of the chairman between the Alafi and two other kings in the state, that's the Olubadon of Ibadan land and son of Ogomosho. Ade and me had uh, 11 wives, uh, the senior among them being Ayaba Bibat, Ade and me, and um, usually attended most events with her or with one of the 12 junior wives. Uh, something about his wives and how they were really very popular on social media. Mm. Well, it's, it's really interesting. I mean, you, you don't want to even begin to understand and uh, try to look at what would actually happen to this wife's now that he's no longer there. <laughs> uh, it's quite interesting, though. Know? Yeah, he had 11 wives. Well, that's, well, that's And about, I think he has like 20, 20 children or thereabout. And so I'm even surprised that he would have even had more since he had like 11 wives. Well, that's cool, Sha, but uh, it is... Um, uh, something called, uh, about the Yoruba people, and um, next uh, in um, line of um, who is going to be a Lafi is the next, uh, you know, conversation on most um, people's um, lips, especially those from that particular area, because who is going to succeed him, you know, is the next uh, uh, conversation. No, so, but, 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 but so for me, what's the concern is that, you know, before this time, um, the pattern and the culture used to be that the eldest son, even if he was, I mean, the eldest son would never succeed um, the Alafin mm -hmm. because the Oyomisi would have to choose who becomes, you know, the next, uh, in the line. next yes, in line. And that's, that, that was how it was done. So it was not that uh, monarchy kind of, uh, you know, governance. It wasn't transferred mm -hmm. like hereditary because your father was a king, he has to. So I just think that a lot has actually changed if you look at the pre current colonial era um, and uh, you know, now. the present day, the medieval era, if you like to put. But, you know, let's see how things pan out. And one of the incidents, there was a certain incident that happened where all the kings were actually summoned sometime at the AFCT. And he constantly stood out. He spoke, he was very vocal um, about certain things. And he made his presence known. A lot of persons said that he was very, very humble. There was never a time that you could find him very angry. And so there was a time where you had a, a gathering of kings. You know, so you have the Obas, you have the Sultan of Sokoto. And it was reported that, you know, for um, the second role was made available for the Obas. So he felt like they relegated the culture of the Yoruba. And he stood out, you know, he stood up. So when he got to the point where he was asking for his seat, and he was being told to sit behind. What he did was he took the tag beside the, so um, the, the you know, the um, Sultan of Sokoto and just sat beside him, feeling that, I mean, why should I be relegated to the back? It was such a uh, very prominent uh, king, if you like yeah, to he say. Was. And his voice was heard in different parts. Uh, so our hearts, our hearts that these uh, go out to, um, you know, members of his family and, of course, uh, all the people of um, Yoruba land uh, who has just lost uh, or have just lost you know, the uh, king uh, who has been on the throne for 52 years. Well, let's uh, move on right now to some other trending uh, matters. Uh, Kenya Detiba is in the news over the weekend. Uh, she uh, tied the knot. I remember uh, King of Boys. Uh, yes, uh, Kemia Detiba was uh, the director of King of Boys. And she just tied the knot with Habu, uh, who is uh, Ghanaian. It was a very colorful one, and uh, it was um, graced uh, by, you know, lots of uh, Nollywood, uh, 
you know, stars there. It was very, very interesting. Nigerian filmmaker, music video director, movie director, television director, she has a whole lot going for her. And producer, whose works have been aired on MTV, Base BET, Channel O, Sound City, and Netflix, uh, no other than Kim Aditba, uh, tied the knot with her Ghanaian lover, who is a music executive, Oscar uh, Herman Aka. I uh, recall that uh, Detiba had shared beautiful moments from her surprise marriage proposal, which occurred in Ghana on the 28th of uh, January this year. Now, the King of Boys uh, filmmaker revealed that her lover, Oscar um, Aka, popped up the question and she whole heartedly said uh, yes. While well, the entire netizens uh, wallowed in just concluded a uh, colorful traditional uh, marriage ceremony of actress uh, Rita Dominic and her husband. And next, uh, we have um, this particular one, Kemi Adetiba and her Ghanaian boo. We wish uh, both of them the newly wed uh, all the best of a marital bliss. Well, so, so I, the question would be why is Kemi Adetiba on the trend and mm -hmm. why is the conversation, you know, up? first of all, great, fantastic uh, directing of that movie, King of Boys. Uh, for a lot of people, that would be, you know, what would have brought her to limelight, and that's on the other side because I'm sure that, as as much as you say she's very popular and she's very relevant, a lot of people might not really resonate up until, you know, you have this particular one, so it's like an inclusive. Mm. But, but top on the chart is the fact that if you look at the age, I mean, Rita Dominic <laughs> over the weekend, uh, right? Was it over the weekend? No, or Tuesday I, last week. Okay, so so just like. Yesterday, I'm <laughs> trying to say 46 years old, yes. 46 year old, and you also have Kemi Adetiba who's 42. So a little bit of some similarity. Basically, that's what people are talking about. Um, so the conversation has been, uh, what's the age bracket? Who puts the age limits? Is there an expectation? It's a good thing. I'm sure that's why a lot of Nigerians and a lot of people could say, hey, you see, you had working women very dedicated and committed. Not to say that, you know, they're absolutely perfect. They still do have their flaws. But you just ask yourself why a lot of people just endeared to celebrating these people because you have a lot of weddings happen every day. I mean, people mm -hmm. get married. So, so what's why, really why special? special? What's uh, really yeah, like you said, yeah, the age thingy, you know, Miss, uh, not, I was going to say Mr. Johnson, uh, Rita Dominic <laughs> in 46. <laughs> Why are you going to call me Mr. <laughs> I don't know. I was going to call you Mr. Johnson, but you are light skinned. Anyway, <laughs> Rita Dominic got married on Tuesday and like three, four days later, it is uh, came at date about, it just goes with the narrative that um, the late, uh, uh, the, uh, the lay is not actually denial. Most people would just okay, always want to... Very... You know, Messi, this is the thing for us here, <laughs> Nigerians, you know, when you're over 30, 35, they're like, ah, uh, she never married, or what's going on? Or, uh, uh, she did not reach 40, or uh, she could still feel born. You know, all those norms, all those talk people would actually go on about uh, women. I don't know why they do that, but the fact is that uh, whenever you decide, to, even if you decide to marry, it is your business. And the fact is that so long as you get into it and you have found the love of your life and you are happy, your happiness is what counts and not exactly what any other person feels or thinks about him, that you are old or you're getting old and yet you've not settled down. Whose business is it? Well, it, it might just be uh, the business for us because it is part of our culture. I mean, we have extolled this, we have made this a lot. And um, I, I just think that it would be okay for, for us not to pressure people, just allow no, them not to be. Uh, no but we wish them the very best. I mean, everyone is getting married, including uh, Kemi Aditibar, Rita Dominic, and everyone who's gotten married, uh, we wish you the very best, blissful one, and uh, continue to celebrate. Yes, congratulations to Kemi Aditibar, and of course, uh, Aka, once again, we wish both of you the best. Moving on, still talking about marriage, uh, making marriage or marriage being uh, broken and all of that. Uh, beautiful actress, uh, Caroline, uh, though she's not acted in a while, though, Caroline um, uh, Danjuma is in the news, and this time around, she uh, she made some statement. Uh, she uh, said that, you know, popular blogger is responsible for the crash of her marriage. Specifically, she is actually blaming uh, Linda EKG for the crash of her marriage. She said something about uh, Linda posting uh, something about her and uh, she tried uh, reaching out to uh, Linda, but Linda couldn't be bothered. Let me just see if I could give you a background. The Nollywood actress Caroline Danjuma has revealed reasons her marriage to the younger brother of Nigeria's former defense minister, 
uh, General T.Y. Danjima did not work. Uh, speaking in the latest episode of reality uh, show, uh, Real Housewives of Lagos, uh, Danjima said, contrary to rumors, she married her ex-husband for love and not for money, adding that Linda EKG is also responsible for her broken marriage. She said, quote, part of the reasons why my marriage broke was because of Linda EKG. I reached out to her when she wrote some things, but she didn't care. Mm. So, um, popularly known as Caroline Udwa Kabasi Akanem, oh, she got sister. married to <laughs> <laughs> she got married to Dan Jima yeah, and the Lord actually happened. Well, I think that this conversation is part of you know the reality TV show. Or, I mean, the series is going on. Yes, um, that particular series that's popular. You mentioned it already. Mm -hmm. The Housewives of the Lagos. Yes, of Lagos. basically, and so you could see a lot of rage that also generated. Um, you know, it brought back memories of the times where Linda KJ was on top of the issue of blogging. And some people have said that uh, her activities have destroyed a lot of persons. Remember the light, I mean, Danjuma, um, Caroline Danjuma might also be a victim, but you also have the likes of Whiskey. Uh, a lot of persons, or Lamy Day was also part of, you know, some reports from Car um, from. <laughs> Linda KG at, at, at a particular time. And some people are saying, oh, let's make excuse for her. She was very young and experienced, and I don't really know. But it's, it's quite sad. I, I might not quite really agree with how that contributed to destroying her marriage, because I really it don't depends even on what she, what she wrote or what she yeah, posted. So if you say that that contributed, in what sense? One would expect that if you are married, uh, you are married, and so should... Um, stories was it because of the stories that were posted because she sounded very um, oh, pained about the fact that her daughter was going through a lot and then um, you know Linda Keji was putting up some stories that really didn't add or be quite hotter as a person and so this was some of the narrative I mean or some of the expressions that she put out at the time but the, the big question would be in that real sense did the blog I mean did how did uh, Linda KG crash the marriage exactly? That's, is the that's what she should be telling. That uh, she should be because I don't understand details. how. No, maybe I, I, let me not assume. I will not. Let me no, not but do it's, any it's okay. It's okay. It's not as. Mm. It's not assumption. It's no. not assumption. But it's okay to just you know look at you know possibilities. Possibilities like <laughs> what could he be? What well, maybe what is something it? negative? Something uh, you know damning. So if about somebody her. writes something negative about your wife, so you take it to blind. No, no. Her? Sometimes it it happens. You know, especially when you are. Uh, a celebrity when you're a public um, figure and uh, some sev several it depends on the post that where it might not just be about uh, the both of you you know when you're married to a man in the African or Nigerian set, you're married to the entire family you know various maybe something negative about her you know they, there'll be like um, a backlash from family members you know all like uh, look at what your wife is doing sometimes you might not want to just react but somehow it might just start sinking in uh, somehow, you know, if you allow it to um, bother you a bit, these things really do happen, you know. Oh, well, uh, it's unfortunate. What has actually happened has happened. But I'm sure that we get to see uh, a lot actually on real. I mean, it's a lot to grapple with for us as a country. Some people would say we need to get to a platform where people can watch us as a country because there's a lot of drama that unfolds every day. But these are top trending conversations. I mean, things that generated a lot of reactions in different spaces in Nigeria. We'll definitely return with more interesting top trending conversations. In the meantime, we'll take a break. When we return, we continue the breakfast with the papers. Stay with us. <laughs>